Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. I sincerely appreciate it. I'm giving a talk today on the psychology and physiology of aging well. Uh, for those of you who have not taken any of my programs, my name is Steve Avellino. I'm a certified fitness trainer. Okay, certified fitness trainer and corrective exercise specialist. Um, I work specifically with senior citizens. Uh, my youngest student is 63, my oldest is 100. Um, I have a company called Reverse the Aging Processes. We do fitness and corrective exercise. Um, what I mean by corrective exercise, okay, will that affect this microphone or no? No, it's good. Okay. Uh, so what I mean by corrective exercise, uh, for those of you who have not taken my programs, I take a look at muscles that are overactive or inactive, mm -hmm. and then I make the necessary changes. So I'm going to pass out these two pictures. They were taken five weeks apart, okay? So the first picture, um, this woman severely hunched over in a high fall risk. The second picture taken five weeks later, um, standing perfectly straight, I saw her about six weeks ago, she has not fallen in over a year. So some of you have already seen these pictures, but for those of you who haven't. And the beauty of corrective exercise, once again, is it happens really quick. Um, so doing my programs, I've worked with over 600 students in the last year. I've had 12 now who've given up their canes or walkers on a f either a full or part-time basis. Uh, lots of students who are pain-free and a bunch who have improved, improved their balance and stability. While doing this, I've become obsessed with the science of aging, and it truly is a science. So we're going to talk today about the uh, blue zones, but prior to that, I have many students who do not want to live to the age of 100. Reason being, there's a preconceived notion of what a 100-year-old looks like or a 100-year-old feels like. Um, I had a 100-year-old on a balance disc, on a yoga block, on one foot with one leg behind her. Uh, all sorts of things can be done if you believe. So you have to ask yourself, would you want to be 100 if you could play with your children or great-grandchildren on the floor with no pain and you could get up easily? Or if you had good quality of life, okay? Yep. That would be awesome. That would be awesome, exactly. Okay? So it really comes down to not how long we live, but how well we live. Me personally, I want to die young, as old as possible. Okay? <laughs> so then the question becomes not why, but how do some people live longer with better quality of life than others? Uh, to answer this question, uh, we're going to look at five areas of the world called the Blue Zones. Uh, there was an author and adventurer by the name of Dan Butner, who was hired by National Geographic. So Dan and a team of demographers and sociologists in 19, uh, excuse me, 2009 identified five places in the world where people may, lived much longer than everyone else with excellent quality of life, like virtually no chronic disease. Okay. Now that said, let's preface this with two facts about longevity. First of all, there's been a multitude of twin studies over the years where they'll take identical twins and they follow them for 30 or 40 years. Uh, and they've determined doing that, that um, longevity is only 25% genetics. The rest is lifestyle, okay? Uh, U.S. Surgeon Generals have all come to the conclusion that 85% of chronic disease can be eliminated or prevented by lifestyle, okay? It's not necessarily genetic. So let's take a look at the blue zones. You have Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Ikaria, Greece, uh, the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, and this surprises everybody, Loma Linda, California, okay? Yeah, yeah. It, it, that doesn't fit, doesn't fit the rest of the group, okay? So, Sardinia, Italy, a mountainous highland uh, on an Italian island, they have the highest concentration of men over the age of 100. <laughs> These men are strong, vibrant, active. So any of you ladies out there looking for a mature man, okay, <laughs> Sardinia is the way to go. Okinawa, Japan, the largest island in the subtropical archipelago, home to the world's longest lived women. Okay, Ikaria, Greece, an island in the Aegean Sea, one of the lowest rates of middle-aged mortality and the lowest rate of dementia. 
Nicoya Peninsula, Costa Rica, and Central America, world's lowest rate of middle age mortality and the second highest rate of males over the age of 100. Loma Linda, California, the highest concentration of Seventh-day Adventists in the United States. Uh, some residents live 10 more healthy years than average Americans. So what Butner decided to do was get a distillation and tease out the factors that contribute to longevity and see if there were any commonalities. He found nine commonalities between the blue zones. So we're going to take a look at those today and kind of figure out if we can incorporate them in our own lives as well. Uh, before he started that, he wanted to see if there were any previous examples of this, and he found one in the 1970s in the North Karelia region of Finland, a gentleman by the name of Pika Puska, uh, did a change in food and eating habits in 170,000 people, reduced heart disease by 80%, reduced some cancers by 60%. Butner firmly believes that if Americans follow the lifestyles of the blue zones, you'll lose an average of 20 pounds. We would have half the heart disease and fifth the rate of certain cancers and an average increase in quality of life by eight years. So what are the nine things that the blue zones have in common? First of all, they move naturally. They move constantly. And it's not a gym or exercise or whatnot, but there are no electrical appliances, really. If they have to do something in the yard, they don't use a mower. But they're always moving, OK? Always moving. And the natural day-to-day -day movements. Uh, there was an interesting thing about a doctor in Loma Linda, 92 years old, multimillionaire. And he decided he wanted to have a privacy fence put up in his yard. So he brought in several contact contractors. Um, the lowest quote was $6,000. Now, mind you, this guy's a multimillionaire. He said, for six grand, I'll do it myself, OK? So he got a post hole digger. He started doing the holes, putting in the cement, everything. Took him three days to finish the privacy fence. Three days after that, he was in the hospital um, at a, on an operating table, but actually not on it. He was next to it because he was assisting in an open heart surgery, which he does a few times every month at the age of 92. Another cool thing is the Blue Zone people move in all three planes of motion, and I'll touch on that later. Now, the next thing is super important. It's called, it's a sense of purpose. The Okinawans call it ikigai, okay? Uh, the Nikoyans, it's plan de vida, and it literally means why I wake up in the morning, okay? Um, the pictures that I sent around, I call that woman baby girl. Her purpose every morning when she woke up was to be able to get stronger so she wouldn't fall. And if you've seen the pictures, uh, she did the exercises every morning. Uh, another woman I'd like to mention, my good friend Barbara Hyde. Okay? When I first met Barbara, she had problems getting out of bed in the morning because of back and leg pain. Barbara can do a full squat with no pain now. She does it all the time in class, scares me to death because she gets really, really low. If you want to see pictures of that, I have taken some. You were just in the class when she was doing it, and it's absolutely amazing. She's also getting out of chairs much better and walking much better. Her classmates mentioned that uh, today. So kudos to you, my friend. Proud of you. Okinawa. It's a woman, 102 years old, her ikigai reason to get up in the morning is to spend time with her great, great, great granddaughter. 100 years separate the two of them, okay? But sense of purpose is huge. Two most dangerous years of life in the United States is the year we're born and the year we retire, okay? And a lot of people, especially males, their ikigai, their purpose every morning is go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, and something happens when you retire. My own father died first year of retirement, okay? Uh, it's interesting, Okinawa, there is no word for retirement, okay? They have no idea what it means. Next thing is a plant-based diet. Uh, beans, legumes, grains, nuts, fruits, vegetables, cornerstone of the diet, roughly 95%. Uh, meat usually once a week, three to four ounce servings. Uh, but you cannot be a dietary agnostic, and I'll get into that later because different diets work for different people. Uh, myself, I'm currently on a very, very low carb diet. I'm intermittent fasting. I only eat between five and nine at night, 
with very few carbohydrates except for vegetables in a salad. Uh, I've seen a lot of studies showing that reduces or eliminates joint pain, so I will let you guys know if it indeed works. But the one thing that all the great diets in the world have, including this one, is very few processed foods. Very few processed foods, which we already know. The 80% rule, in Okinawa it's called harahachibu, and it means to stop eating when you're 80% full. The problem with that is the brain doesn't get the signal that we're full until like 20 or 30 minutes later, okay? And I'll be the first to admit I'm at the table continuing to shovel it in, and then all of a sudden the brain says, hey, you were full 20 minutes ago. And then it's nap time. Uh, the Blue Zone people, they eat slowly and with friends and family, uh, which is something that we don't do in the United States that much anymore because of everyone's schedules. This is very interesting. They use smaller plates and they serve from the counter. So as far as serving from the counter, I remember this Thanksgiving, all the food is on the table and there's a big basket of rolls sitting right next to me. Okay, that was not good. It was not good at all. But the smaller plates are interesting. Our grandparents' plates were roughly 10 inches in diameter. Plates now are 13 inches, okay? So there's a huge difference there in the amount of food we eat. And if you go to a restaurant, I don't even think plates exist anymore. Everything's on a platter, okay? Uh, they've done many studies on animals, specifically monkeys, 25, 30 year studies showing that uh, if you cut the caloric intake of the monkeys by 30%, they live significantly longer. And that's been tested on many, many animals. I don't believe it's been tested on humans yet, probably because it's very difficult to find a human who wants to give up 30% of their caloric intake. Moderate alcohol. All blue zones except the Adventists in Loma Linda, California will have one to two glasses of red wine daily. The Adventists do not because their diet is dictated by the First Testament, so there's no alcohol. Uh, in Sardinia, they have a wine called the Sardinian Cananu wine, which is filled with polyphenols, which are antioxidants. But once again, they're having this wine with friends, family, over meals. Uh, and good safety tip, even though you may be allowed two glasses of wine a day, you can't hold off for the first six days a week and have 14 on Saturday. This next one is huge, downshifting, okay? Stress produces chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is responsible, pretty much responsible for age-related diseases, okay? The Seventh-day Adventists, at Friday at, between Friday at midnight and Saturday at midnight, it's total downtime. Okay, it's worship, it's food with friends and families, hikes outside, there's no cell phones, there's no work, there's nothing. Okay, and that's huge, especially in this country, because, I mean, we're always on the phones doing this, I gotta go here, I gotta go there. You need time for yourself. You need some sort of meditative time for yourself. Uh, the Okinawans, daily reverence to ancestors, 20 minutes every single day. Uh, the other thing is sleeping. They sleep when they want, which must be nice. If you go way back, we would, were just like birds. We would wake up when the sun rose, okay, and we would go to sleep when the sun set. Everything changed in 1879 when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, okay, and our sleeping habits have been getting worse and worse since then. It's even worse now with all the tech, with the phones and the computers, because it's very difficult to shut the brain off. Like if you're on the computer doing something, shut it off and go right to bed, it's very difficult to fall asleep. So I've started spending like 30, 45 minutes before bed with no tech whatsoever. Um, sleep also plays a housekeeping role. It removes toxins in the brain that build up while we are awake. So it's incredibly important for us. Uh, there's a protein called beta amyloid, and it's in the microglial cells uh, that remove a toxin commonly found in brains of Alzheimer's patients. So once again, sleep super important and downshifting very important. Blue zone people, right tribes. Social circles promote healthy behaviors. If when I was in college, two of my roommates smoked cigarettes and consumed a lot of alcohol. Second semester, I was smoking cigarettes and consuming a lot of alcohol, okay? Whereas if you hang out with people that, you know, go out for walks all the time or go to the gym, you're more than likely to do that. In the Okinawans, it's really cool. They have what are called mawais. So little girls are put together at the age of four or five, okay? Maybe, you know, three, four, five, six of them. They remain friends through life, 
okay? So you have, I saw a video of these five women between the age of 102 and 103 years old. And the two of them were still arguing about which boy liked the best in high school. But they're always there when they need each other, to the point where they all live in the same neighborhood. If at some point in time, one of them sees that the other one hasn't opened their shutters yet, they go over to check on them. But it's huge because I, I think it was in the 1970s, we had on average four friends. Now in the United States, we have on average one and a half friends. I don't know where the half comes in, but. And the cool thing about Moais, since I've been working in so many senior centers, senior centers are like a Moai, okay? Uh, I try to keep my classes as they go through the different programs, I try to keep the same people together, okay? That way we have our own little Moais. Um, I've had some students in my classes that didn't know other people in the class and now go to the gym with them, they go to movies with them and whatnot. Family first, the blue zones. Grandparents often live with the families or are very close by. There are a ton of studies showing that grandparents who look after their grandchildren have a lower risk of death. And I think this probably ties back into the ikigai, the sense of purpose. Um, and then the other thing, family meals. Blue zones all do that, which is something that is very difficult to do in the United States because we're all, we're all over the place, family-wise. Faith-based community. They interviewed 263 centenarians. Only five were not faith-based. So first of all, the social support of your place of worship is great. Reduced rates of depression. And it also provides the scheduled meditation each week. So if you're at a worship service, you're pretty much downshifting. Okay? Social equity. This one drives me absolutely insane. Older people are revered for their experience and wisdom in the blue zones. That is not the case in the United States. Uh, we pretty much lose our social equity in the United States roughly age 24. Um, my kids, 31, 29, and 26, are just so depressed that they're so old now. Okay? <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing. When my oldest turned 30, we had a birthday party for her, and she says, Pops, I'm so depressed. I'm 30 years old, and I'm reversing the aging processes. So I said, if you're depressed now, wait until you and I turn 38 on the same day, okay? <laughs> and then she just went over the deep end. But think about it. In the blue zones, the grandchildren and the children, the seniors are revered, okay? Because of the knowledge, the wisdom, the experience. And that's the way it should be, and it's not in this country. And obviously, younger people can learn an immense amount from seniors. Um, there's a group, I believe, in Utah, uh, six or seven gentlemen who would get together for coffee every Saturday morning to, as they put it, solve the problems of the world, okay? So they decided to take that group and invite young people to come in on Saturday mornings you know, to ask questions, okay? So the first one I saw, this young woman came in and she's talking to these, these uh, seniors and she says, you know, my, my boyfriend does this, my boyfriend does that, we're thinking about getting married, but I don't know. And they were like, what are you, out of your mind? Dump this guy, you know? But they have the experience, okay? Uh, also in the Netherlands, they're now taking, providing college age students with free tuition or some sort of free tuition if they live in nursing homes with seniors. Now the cool thing is the nursing homes are like nursing homes here. So they're set like it's back in the 50s, okay? So the seniors are digging on it because they're walking around and everything's cool like when they were kids. And the college students are enjoying it because they're learning you know, back about, you know, the 50s and 60s and from the seniors. So they get the experience from the seniors and the seniors get the, you know, can you help me with my phone from the college <laughs> students. So it works out well. Another thing with social equity, anybody heard the expression, hey, boomer? Okay, drives me crazy. Okay, I apologize. You may want to block your ears before I say this. Okay. So, hey, boomer was, and they, some millennials say it's not derogatory, but I think it is. If a senior says something or doesn't get something about a tech question, it's, hey, boomer, okay? Even to the point at the Harvard DL football game, at, the, at halftime, 150 students stormed the field, 
and started yelling, hey, boomer, hey, boomer, and blaming this generation on pollution and all sorts of other things. The crazy thing is when they left the field, they left all their cups and, and stuff on the field. Then someone decided to monetize it and come up with Hey Boomer t-shirts, okay, which drives me even further insane. So I was thinking of combating and I decided against it because, and no offense, you may not want to listen to this, but 30 years from now, I'm going to be treating more 30-year-olds than 90-year-olds because of this, okay? The human head in this position is 12 pounds. The human head in this position is supporting 40 pounds. Okay, and it's a major, major epidemic. So me, in an uh, act of immaturity, or thinking of, of an act of immaturity, I thought, okay, if they're gonna get down on us for being seniors with these Hey Boomer t-shirts, and once again, I apologize, going like this with a phone, eventually you're gonna be in a walker, like at the age of 45, so I was gonna do a hey, like for millennials, hey, Millie t-shirts with all these young people walking around in walkers looking at their phones. But then I decided to be mature about it. But I'm still thinking about it. Okay. So we think about, okay, so the Blue Zone people can do this, but you reach a certain age and you cannot do things anymore. So I'd like to introduce you to the Tarahumara, okay? A tribe in Mexico. 400 years ago, when the conquistadors invaded the Me uh, Mexico, the Aztecs and the Incas um, decided to fight, uh, which is why there are no more Aztecs and Incas. Uh, the Tarahumara decided to run to the Copper Canyons in Mexico, where they've been for the last 400 years. 70 and 80-year-old Tarahumara people can go, will go out for the occasional 50 to 100-mile run through the canyons, okay? The reason they can do it and we cannot, they never stopped, okay? We sat down. We sat down for a few decades and then it was all downhill after that. And the cool thing about the Tarahumara, and I talk about this in all my programs, that we want to have the movement of a five-year-old. And I try to make the programs fun and we do crazy stuff, we do stupid stuff, and the first few classes, <laughs> thank you for your, <laughs> your vote of support on that. And the first couple of classes, I see some of my students and they're looking to see if other people are looking through the window because we're acting so foolish. But when you think about it, when we were five, movement was fun, okay? And we didn't care if we looked dumb. It was fun. At some point in time, that fun was substituted by fear. And then movement is, is associated with fear, not fun. But you can get the fun back, okay? So just as a point of reference, the Tarahumara are such great runners, they have world-class runners going down there to run with them now, okay? These world-class runners will have, you know, the running shoes worth several hundred dollars, the heart rate monitors, the clothes that take your sweat as soon as it, you, you perspire and it takes it off your body. They're wearing hundreds of dollars worth of gear. Uh, the last Tarahumara race I looked at was won by a 22-year-old Tarahumara girl in traditional long dress and sandals, okay? She didn't have the hundreds of dollars of equipment on. Reason being, they asked her, why do you do this? Because it's fun, okay? So you have American runners or European runners, and they're running and all they're thinking about is the pressure of the time. Okay, I gotta beat this time, I gotta be here by this time, here by this time. The Tarahumara movement is fun and it still is at the age of 70 and 80, okay? So, how does America increase longevity? Health clubs, 20.3 billion. Supplements, 28.1 billion. Diets, 60.9 billion for a total of 109.3 billion, okay? And it really hasn't worked. Um, we still have increased uh, incidences of heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancers. Once we hit a certain age, we are besieged by pharmaceutical companies and all of the companies that will help us be a senior, okay? Uh, and the, they're insinuating there that we can no longer help ourselves. I think that's BS, okay? Woman right over here who can do a full squat at age 94, all right, can help herself, all right? And it's interesting, just as an aside, I keep getting messages from a company that wants to sell me a walker. 
okay? <laughs> and it's always a message, and I'm dying to pick up the phone and have someone on the other end of the line so I can tell them, I'm trying to put you guys out of business. You know, you really don't want to be calling me. So, what can we do? So if we follow the, um, the moves of the Blue Zone people, we can learn to move again, okay, which is huge. Uh, it may involve, as opposed to looking for the closest parking spot, looking for one that's maybe a little further away. You know, the day you don't feel like going out for a walk, maybe doing that. Gardening, anything like that is very, very helpful. Uh, you really need to find your ikigai, if that's possible, and that's your sense of purpose. Because if you can wake up every morning with a sense of purpose of what you want to do, what you're going to accomplish that day, it is huge for your demeanor, absolutely huge. Barbara's ikigai, when she wakes up every morning, is to do the move, so there's no pain, okay? I have a gentleman who had heart surgery, and I was training him privately. His ikigai was when he went down to Florida this winter, to walk around this lagoon by himself, which is nine tenths of a mile, which is something he used to do when he was younger and then couldn't after his start, heart started failing. Uh, I had a woman here, one of my, in my first program, who ended up giving up her walker after my six week balance program. Her ikigai was to get into a position where she could go on vacation, I believe she went to Alaska, and be able to walk around and enjoy her vacation without worrying about balance and stability. So that's what she thought about when she got up every morning. Um, I have a lot of clients who have difficulties getting out of chairs. And especially with couples, it's caused them to not go out, to not dine out, okay? Because the husband is embarrassed because he needs help getting out of a chair. So in turn, they don't have their date night every week, okay? Um, I have three private clients that, um, that was their Ricky guy to be able to get out of a chair so that they could go out, dine out with their wives. Um, I had one woman in one of my classes who had serious issues getting out of a chair, um, and then she was able to do so, and I saw her sister several months ago, and I said, How, how's Diane doing? Um, she said, I don't know, she's never home anymore, okay? <laughs> Which is awesome, you know, absolutely awesome. Time with family, huge. Another thing that is very difficult to do in this country, at least for me, I pretty much have to call my children's appointment secretaries to make it a date to see them. I'm joking, but it's getting really close. Okay, downshifting during the day. Take some time for yourself, okay? That is huge. Just let the brain clear. Let the stress just go out of the body. The 80% rule, when you're 80% full, push yourself away from the table. I have not mastered that yet and I probably never will, to be honest. Plant-based diet. Uh, all the Blue Zone people do it. I don't know if I actually buy it because I've been taking a look at a lot of lectures and classes and studies on eliminating carbohydrates, keto, um, and once again, if my joint pain goes away, carbohydrates are not gonna be a fixture in my diet. Now keep in mind the body requires fats and proteins. It does not require carbohydrates. All right, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Michael Nichols in California, he has a 20 year practice. He wrote a book called Quantit Quantitative Medicine, which is fascinating. And he believes in no sugar or starch. Um, he's had over 2,300 patients that will go there with chronic disease. He puts them on the proper diet, pretty much no carbohydrates because they break down in the body as glucose, which is a sugar. And you know, heart disease is going away, cancer is going away, whatnot. So once again, do not be a dietary agnostic because what may be a great diet for you may not be a great diet for you, okay? Because the body processes things differently. So where do we start? Easiest way is things that provide instant gratification because let's face it, um, I can say, all right, here's a piece of cake which looks really great now, there's instant gratification, but if I don't eat it six months from now, I may be a little lighter. That's a tough sell, you know, because the cake's right there, and we're big on instant gratification. So why not do the same that the Blue Zone people do and hit the things first that uh, provide instant gratification? And once again, one of them is corrective exercise. If you've taken one of my programs, you realize how quickly things happen, okay? And the pictures that I passed around, I don't know where they are. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, that happened in five weeks, okay? So if you can do something to help reverse aging 
that happens really quickly, then you're more in tune to trying the next thing, okay? As opposed to saying, okay, I'm gonna do a blue zone diet for the next six months and then see what happens. Okay, that's too long a period of time. Uh, so instant gratification, move pain free and balance. If you can move pain free and you have your balance, you're gonna start moving more and more and more and more. I've seen it happen, I've had over 600 students in the past year. Once you start moving more and there's no fear of balance issues, no pain, you're gonna start doing things that you used to do, okay? I have a 78-year-old student who is paddleboarding down in Florida. I have a, she's from Milford, one of my private students. I have a student in Foxborough, 78 years old, who goes climbing on trails in New Hampshire now, okay? Barbara's doing full squats. Um, it's just amazing, it's amazing. Okay, next one, find your purpose, and this is a tough one. But I mean, if you can just say, okay, my purpose this week is to take an extra walk this week. You know, you can make it simple, start off slow, but it's huge. Then the other thing, as far as social equity is concerned, you cannot believe society. Do not do it, do not do it, do not do it. They look at us, and I understand with kids, okay, because they're trying to protect us, all right? But so many times I've had students and we're talking and they said, yeah, I went to my doctor and I said, why can't I do this? You're 86, what do you expect? You have no idea how many times I've heard that exact line. You're 92, what do you expect? You're 74, what do you expect? And then we hear it so much, we buy into it, okay? But you don't have to, you don't have to. Um, you're never too old. Age is not measured in years, it's measured in lack of motion. Okay, so if you're up and moving again and do a few other things for your health, all of a sudden you're gonna be moving more and good things happen, okay? Um, as far as moving pain-free and balance, which is what I specialize in, I look at decompressing the spine. You can actually lengthen your spine during certain moves, as a lot of you know now. I've had 12 students, right now we're 12 for 12, go to the annual physical and they're a half inch taller than they were last year, okay? Um, there's a bunch of different things. If anyone has any questions or want me to show, give them a couple tips on balance, what to do if you think you're gonna fall, or getting out of a chair, I will be more than happy to do so, okay? Thank you very much. Now, are there any questions at all? No? All right, I hate to say this, but enjoy some cookies. <laughs>